Welcome to Thruxton for the first ever Pitch BTCC TV programme. We'll be covering everything from behind the scenes of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. Talking to the drivers, talking to the teams, talking to the engineers, talking to the suppliers of all the stuff that makes these cars go round and round and round. And then when you fans come back, we'll be having a chat with you as well. So keep it peeled, check out the Pitch BTCC app, get logged in, find out what it's all about. We'll try and let you know. I don't know everything, so that's why I'm gonna ask this lot what's going on. See you soon. So we're here at Thruxton, a very wet Thruxton, for the first round of the BTCC series. And I'm with Pat Blakeney, who's circuit director? Circuit manager, even circuit manager. Not quite director. No, no, not quite director. So the big thing I think at Thruxton is it's the f it's the fastest circuit that the British Touring Car Championship go to, and I've got to say personally, the, the scariest, definitely when it's as wet as it is today. But the the big thing I think is there's been so much work that's gone on with resurfacing because it used to be known as a bit of a tire killer really, and it was a big tire management both from the teams and from the drivers, keeping off the curves for the first couple of laps, all that sort of thing. But it seems now that the work that you put in has made the made it a bit friendlier for the teams and drivers. I like to think so. We've done some. We haven't done full resurfacing. We've done some patching in some key areas. We work very closely with the tarmac technicians and the people that laid it. Although the tarmac that we put down looks completely different, especially when it's wet, it looks horrendous when it's wet. But the grip level, they've matched with new tarmac, they've matched with stuff that's 20 years old. So, uh, it, and that's wet all dry. So they've done an incredible job there. But it's in the high wear areas, so uh, turn one through Allard, a uh, bit through the complex, and obviously uh, Church and Goodwood as well. I think that has alleviated some of the, the uh, high load areas where it was killing tires. But the sheer nature of Thruxton, we just haven't got any straights, so unfortunately it is what it is. And you almost, you're, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you've got high grip tarmac, then it eats the tires. If you've got low grip tarmac, because you're on the turn all the time, it just overheats them. So yep. you, you're trying to strike that happy medium in the middle, it's very difficult. Okay, so I'm standing here with Mickey Butler, who I always called Mickey from Dunlop, but he's now Mickey from Goodyear. And uh, we're here at the, the Goodyear truck where the guys are getting tyres ready. Tyres are gonna be a massive story here this weekend because it's pouring with rain, but it might be dry tomorrow. So how does that work for the teams, Mickey? Obviously, I mean, the team's not really much up the stage in the wet rain. I think it's only the second time I've ever used wet rain with track. So it's a big learning curve. I mean, the long range forecast is FP1 looking wet. It could change for FP2, then qualifying dry stage. Everybody will be learning throughout the day. Um, but you know, Thruxton, not my favourite place in the world. You know, the nature of the circuit, the high speed, the high loading. Um, yeah, but it's an old school track that teams, drivers need to respect. So I'm here at one of the first teams, we're with the Team Hard team, and they've had a very busy winter. They've built four new Cupras, which is unbelievable. It's a massive, massive job. Um, as you come through, they've got four drivers in the cars. They've got Glyn Geddy, they've got Jack Goff. Glyn has raced a little bit before, Jack Goff was good. Jack Goff was very quick at media day. He'll be one to look out for. So the guys have done brilliantly. And as you can see, they're still flat out, probably making changes for the wet conditions. But if we come down here, we've got a couple more drivers to look at. So we've got Nick Hamilton here in, in his car. And then who have we got over here? Got Aaron Taylor-Smith. So Aaron's come back for more touring car action. Having got bored in GTs, he wanted to get involved in touring cars again. This is a team that I reckon could cause a few surprises. Media day, they were the shock of the day, I would have said. So keep an, out, keep an eye out for the black and white cars. So a bit further down the paddock, we're here at the Accelerate trade price cars, Hyundai team, look fantastic. Big story over the winter, Tom Ingram, superstar. 
swaps teams from the Speedworks Toyota over to Hyundai. Obviously, he likes Japanese cars. So coming down here, two, well, one, one, one new guy, one who's he's in his second year of British touring cars. You've got Jack Bootle in the very brightly coloured Lucas car, which looks great. And then we've got Rick Parfit. Now, Rick, he's, he's a rock star. There is no other way to describe it. He's a rock star. But coming over this side, now he's always wanted to have a go at touring cars. Now, I spoke to him over the winter. He's a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous, but I said to him, don't worry about it. No, nobody expects you to be winning races. Just keep it on the island, keep learning all the time. So he'll be somebody to look out for. But definitely, Tong Ingram, Chris Smiley, they should be challenging for podiums here. So the next team along is the motorbase team. A little bit confusing, there's four cars but run under two separate banners. We've got the MB Motorsport side of the garage here and then we've got the Vera Tools Photon Grow team this side. They've got Jake Hill and Ollie Jackson on this side. They've got Sam Osborne and Andy Nee on the other side. They've all had a good session, the first free practice session. I know the whole team has done a load of testing. They've got some great guys working on the cars. I think they're going to be a strong package this year. Again, it's just about gelling a new team. A bit of a new management setup as well, but I think it'll all work well. You've got still a lot of experience behind the scenes, but uh, yeah, a little bit of a dark horse, I would say. So anybody who knows about their motorsport will know exactly what WSR stands for. It's West Surrey Racing. And there's a reason why these guys have won so many British Touring Car Championships. They've got a great lineup. They've got a great team, they've got a great car. The wet conditions are sometimes a bit of a problem for them, but I think they've been working on that over the winter. So we're looking at these guys being very strong this year. So I'm outside at the Toyota Gazoo Racing Garage where they're running two Toyota Corollas, surprise, surprise. They've got two new drivers, but they've got Rory Butcher, and now they're running a second car with Sam Smell, who are both two of my ex-drivers, so I know them really well. These guys will do well. I think Roy will take a couple of meetings just to get used to the car and the team get used to him. But once he gets into the swing of it, he'll definitely win races this year. Laser Tools Racing. I would honestly say that they've got the fastest driver on the grid in Ash Sutton. Um, you know, and, and once it comes to racing, there's nobody who doesn't get his, his elbows out, let's say, as much as Ash. So, I mean, they're looking strong for the year. The cars obviously won the championship last year. I think these guys are definitely the guys we're looking at. You know, the other teams we're chasing, let's put it that way. So next up is Team Dynamics with Cataclean. Probably one of the most, well definitely one of the most experienced teams, consistently competitive in the British Touring Car Championship. One of the big stories over the winter was, you know, sadly really, that Matt Neal stood down from driving because, you know, Matt is one of the stars of British Touring Cars for the last 30 years. Sorry Matt, that's a long time I know. But looking inside, they've got Gordon Shedden back. Gordon knows what he's doing. I think he was up in the top four last in the first session, doing a great job and consistently at the top through most of the session as well. Alongside him is Dan Rowbottom, who's raced a couple of different touring cars over the last couple of years, sat out last year, but has come back strong, wanted to come back in a front running team, and he's not gonna get a much better team than Team Dynamics. So pressure's on Dan, especially with such a quick teammate. Interesting to see how they get on, especially now Honda aren't officially backing them, but to be honest with you, the strength is in Team Dynamics, not necessarily in the manufacturer side of it. So I don't think it's gonna be a weakness for them. In fact, I think sometimes the pressure comes off, the team might be able to you know, loosen themselves up a bit and, and maybe perform even better. So we're on to another Honda team now. This is BTC Racing, but they're running a different engine from the other Hondas because they're running a Swindon engine, which is the Toker provided engine, which actually the majority of the grid run on. And it helps the privateer teams compete against the manufacturer team. So it's, it's a great idea as far as I'm concerned. They've got Jade Edwards. Jade's come up through Clio's, GT's, and she did a one-off race last year in the Vauxhall. She'll be doing well, she wants to learn her touring car experience. She knows she's got a lot to learn, but she has got the pace. So expect to see her up in the points really from the start of the year, I would expect. So we've got another BMW team here, which is Sicily Motorsport. I think it's, I think it's got car gods as well. So there's lots of sponsors involved in this team. 
The big story from free practice one was Tom Chilton didn't do any time laps. Surprising, he's been quick. They've done lots of testing with his teammate, Adam Morgan. But as I can see here, it looks like we've got a gearbox problem because we've got a gearbox sitting on the floor there. But it's all hands to the deck. So if you come round this side, we've got Russell Morgan, who's Adam Morgan's dad. But Russell runs the team. He's even he's even getting his hands dirty for a check. Look, 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 dirty. Must have fallen over. Must have fallen over. But so... But again, you know, it, it's always a shame. It shows you in motorsport, you can do as much testing as you like and you come to the main event and the car lets you down. But uh, these guys will get it ready. They're, they're a super team, uh, a family team, and, and really get involved with the ethos of British touring cars. Um, but expect to see these two up at the front during the season as well. So again, another team who are really looking really, really strong after the media day is the Powermax team. And looking through here, so we've got two Vauxhall Astras, two great drivers. Jason Plato, who is the most experienced touring car driver ever, knows what he's doing. If anybody can win touring car races, he can. Alongside him is a bit more of a young hot shoe, Dan Lloyd, supremely experienced, been racing over Europe in the last few years in touring cars over in TCR. But what we've got here, if you want to come through, a big story actually is, one of the big stories in the whole paddock is new cars coming on the grid. But actually Jason's chassis is a brand new chassis. That's never been raced before. So what that says to me is the team really means business. They want to give their, you know, their lead driver the best possible opportunity to start scoring points, start scoring wins, and, and you know, really aim for the title. And I think these guys are somebody who could really do that. session of the year there's no change we've got Ash Sutton who's at the top of the times again seems to be especially when it's wet you get Nemo back up at the top but his teammate Aidan Moffat is going really well as well so they're looking very strong as a team Carl Birdle is new to the Infinity so he's actually learning how to how to get on with it but they're an experienced team they've got quite a few new guys involved this year but really they're the ones to beat at the moment Okay, I'm here after free practice one with Tom Oliphant, who's in the West Surrey Works BMWs. Looking pretty good out there, to be honest, we were watching the chicane. So how was the session for you, Tom? Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I've, I've been coming here for nine years and uh, never raced in a wet, never tested in a wet. So um, I, I've asked a lot of drivers up and down the paddock. I think most of us, other than Plato, who's been here since the dinosaurs were roaming, um, haven't raced here. I think it's wet. even before the dinosaurs oh, were wow. roaming, I think. I asked him on the track walk and he said, uh, oh, 1997, we raced in the snow. And I was like, great, I was seven. Um, he told me where to go. But um, no, I was just trying to get as much learning as possible. So, you know, we were focusing on just doing as many laps, trying different lines, trying different setups, trying to be confident in myself and the car. Because uh, obviously around Thruxton, confidence is, is king. So um, yeah, I've come away with a smile on my face. So that's always a positive. So I'm outside the Powermax racing garage with Dan Lloyd, who's just finished his free practice session, who's going well. Dan, how was it for you and, and what's changed with British Touring Cars since you've been away? Yeah, it was a solid start. Um, to be honest, a little bit nervous about this session today because uh, I've been racing in Europe for the past two years and the, the, the amount of uh, running I've done in the wet has been very limited. So this is my first day in the wet in this car. First time at Thruxton in like four, four or five years, so um, it was pretty solid to be honest. Our P13 at the end, we had a bit of an issue at the start, uh, got going, we did a bit of housework, so putting some heat cycle through some of the wets. Um, I know there's a, a shed load more time to come, so yeah, solid start to be honest. So I'm here with the Powermax Racing boss, Adam Weaver. We just had a chat with Dan Lloyd, who's his new driver this year. And then we've got Jason Plato here as well, who is Mr. Touring Cars, you have to say. So I think you've got a great driver lineup. What are your targets for this year? Every year we, we want to win the championship. You know, that's the only thing I'm here for. Um, and it's just a matter of time until we get to that point. I think this year we've got as good a chance as we've ever had. You know, the driver pairing's really, really strong and uh, you know they're, they're going to push each other on hopefully. We've got Tom Ingram 
who's uh, really has been one of the stars of British touring cars. I know you don't like me saying it, <laughs> for for the last few years now, and, and you know a real a real young guy who's come through the support series at British Touring Cars, and, and you know challenged for championships, won the Independence Championship, but a big change for you this year because you've been at Speedworks all the way through your British Touring Car career, and now you moved over to the Hyundai with Accelerate. How's, how have you found that change? I found it great actually, um, John. It's been it's been great, and, and like you said, I've been at Speedworks for all of my touring car career. So since 2014, I've only known driving for Speedworks. So it felt quite strange having to to, to leave, but you know, I felt very at home instantly here at Accelerate. So it's um, you know, a great great bunch of guys and girls here. I've made both Spencer and I. So Spencer, wherever Spencer is, um, was my engineer at Speedworks. So Spencer's come across with me. Both of us have been working with open arms and, and we've loved it, absolutely loved it. And I think naturally, as humans, we don't really like change, do we? We're quite, we're quite, uh, quite happy to be settled, but yeah. actually when it comes to it, the change is fantastic and I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And so far the car's been feeling fantastic as well. So yeah, all the signs are pointing, you know, you know pointing one in the right direction at the minute, but um, naturally this is when all of, the, all of the talking stops and it comes to crunch time this weekend. So I'm outside the Team Hard garage and there seems to be a bit of major work going on here. We've got a subframe and it looks like taking an engine out by the look of it, so I'm not quite sure what's happened. But uh, it doesn't look like Glyn Geddes going to be able to get out for the uh, second session, but the guys are working flat out to get the car ready. Um, but I know how much work that is and it's going to be a struggle to get it out, but the, I'm sure they'll have it ready for qualifying. So, you know, fingers crossed for them because Glyn was going well in the wet in the first session. So I've just managed to catch team boss Tony Gillam as we saw the problem with Glyn Geddes' car. What seems to be the problem, Tony? So we had a bit of an off in um, FP1 at Goodwood. So once you get on the grass, there's no stopping over there. So first time running in the wet, so Glyn was testing the impact protection on the car as well for us. So that was a uh, tick all the boxes, but we just called it at a funny angle. So it's just pulled one of the clevises out on the side of the subframe. So obviously can't repair that on the car. So new subframe on the car, reset, go again. So a bit of a shame, just caught it at a funny angle, but took it well. I heard it was quite a big, big moment for him. Uh, Mr. Baldy was behind him. So it's interesting to see how the car stood up, which is pretty good, but it's just unfortunate we've got to change the subframe. So we're midway through free practice two, and one of the drivers I spoke to earlier, Dan Lloyd in the Vauxhall, PMR Vauxhall, he's unfortunately had an off at church, which is the fastest corner in the country, run wide by the sound of it, bumped his way over the grass. It didn't look particularly happy, but the thing is, you can see down here, you have a big scoop at the front, which you get all the air into the radiators and the intercoolers. The problem is, it, the splitter digs the turf and the grass in and it blocks all the radiator and then that's the end of the session really because you can't get that out quickly so it's it's going to be a big job for the guys to strip the front off ready for qualifying it's a shame because Dan was looking quick so let's hope he can get it all ready for quali so we just looked at the car of Dan Lloyd here's Dan he's back here now let's just ask him exactly what happened Hello Dan, hi. Sorry to see your sessions ended early. It's uh, It sounded a typical church moment, but tell us exactly what happened. Yeah, I was just trying to um, carry a bit more speed through church, trying um, trying sixth gear instead of fifth. Uh, <laughs> carried quite a bit in and the, the rear snapped really aggressively, so full throttle in sixth, full full uh, full lock on and uh, yeah, went off, off into the field. Cars, car would have been fine, but it just dug in a little bit, which took some body work out. So we just thought it's best to bring it back and make sure it's it's right for qualifying. So what's the difference between running fifth and sixth gear, if you like, speed-wise, but also as, it's drivability as well as speed, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, one thing, when if, if you do have a moment and something goes wrong and the rear steps out, when you get on throttle, because you're low in the revs, it's not going to bring you back round quite as well. It's better revving a little bit higher and you've got a little bit more control if something does go wrong. And probably with me just trying that little bit more and asking a little bit more, maybe I just carried a bit too much in and, yeah, it just snapped, so, yeah. It's all right, it's only one piece. Qualifying should be interesting, but all good so far, all good. 
So we're back at the Team Hard Garage. One driver who didn't get out in free practice too is Glyn Geddy. So we've got his car here. Just give you a quick update throughout the day by the look of it. So the guys are working flat out here on the front subframe where Glyn had that incident in free practice one. You can see the engine here and the gearbox waiting to be bolted back into it. And this is the tricky thing. When you have, do have a big incident, you haven't got much time to mend it. But if again, you can see here, here's the subframe. And it's, they're putting the steering rack on there. It's got six bolts that they use to bolt it into the front of the chassis over there. So it'd be interesting to see how they get on. But uh, they should be fine for qualifying, I think. So that's the end of FP2. Gordon Shedden is fastest in that session with his teammate P3, Dan Rowbottom. So the Hondas are looking really, really strong. So we're gonna have a chat with a few of the guys and see how, how they've got on, see what they can improve for qualifying, and, and let's see if the, the weather's gonna be dry in about three hours time. So it's 15 years since the last full-time female race driver in British touring cars, and it's great to see JD Edwards making a return for, for, the, for half the world's population. It's madness, isn't it, really, when you think about it like that? But Jade, doing a great job. You know, are you enjoying your time in British touring cars? Obviously, you did one race last year, but now you're on for a full season. So how does that feel? Yeah, really good. I mean, I did last year on that one-off round, sort of in split mind and knowing that that could be my only time ever driving a touring car and to really enjoy it. But if I work hard enough and, and milk it marketing-wise, I could have made it into a full season and thankfully it went in the latter direction and here I am for a full year, so I'm over the moon. What are your aims for qualifying and for tomorrow? To be honest, it's um, as you can see, it's a bit of a baptism of fire this weekend with it being Thruxton and it's raining, it's changeable conditions. So for me, I just want A3 race finishes. Um, qualifying, I'd be happy to be sort of fighting for the similar position this morning, 17th, you know, inside that top 20 and then work forward from there. I think points on the board leaving tomorrow would be my aim. After an incredible British touring car qualifying, where it started wet, gradually dried out, the last few minutes, I was slightly out of breath actually, I was holding my breath, it was so exciting. So we ended up with Ash Sutton on pole, uh, incredible, followed by Josh Cook, and then right at the last knockings, Colin Turkington pulled it out of the bag. I don't think he'd actually been in the top 10 the whole session, let alone been up there, so it's P3. Jake Hill was probably one of the sob stories of the session. He was looking on for taking pole position, but then got blocked at the last chicane by Jason Plato. So let's see if the stewards have a look at that one for him. But an incredible session, and I think the drivers have definitely <laughs> earned their money today. So after qualifying, I'm back in Jade Edwards' garage. I'm in an unbelievable qualifying. At one point, I think you were P8. I was jumping up and down at the back of the garage. I was going, whoa, this is gonna look good. So what happened? To be honest, that, that P8 was a genuine P8 when it was in those conditions and we were all still on wets. Everyone had done their second run and I was still P8 and you know I almost had a nosebleed being up that high. You know, It, it surprised <laughs> me as much as you did, but I really just digging deep and trying hard, but it, it dried out and I just went to slicks too late. Um, by the time I was kind of building the heat up, everyone else had their heat and was you know on for their faster lap. So I just changed too late, but that's probably a sign of my experience in this championship, but overall a very positive session. So we're inside the RML parts truck. Simon Holloway's gonna show us around. There's over 250,000 pounds worth of parts in this truck. It's unbelievable. It just depends how busy they are, but the, the, you know, it, it, it's really luck of the draw whether they'll use all those parts for a weekend. The teams hope they won't, RML hope they will. So Simon, show us a little bit around the truck and show us exactly what, what's involved with supplying the British touring car grid. Yeah, no problem. 
Um, so we, a part of our contract, we agree to support every race and every official um, test that happens. So we take our, our race truck, um, goes to each of those events and we sell parts off the truck. So the massive advantage to the teams means that they don't have to stock up with lots of valuable spares that they may or may not use. Um, so we stock on board the truck five complete car sets of parts. So if you imagine you've got 30 odd cars on the track, we've got five sets of parts on the truck and some more common used parts we have more of on board. Um, so generally, we've never ran out of a part yet, um, touch wood, so um, we've always got whatever's needed on, on board for the team. And we replenish the truck um, as soon as we get back to the office on a Monday. The truck gets replenished from our general stores. So, um, so although we've got yeah, 300,000 pounds worth of parts on board the truck, we've got a lot more in stock back there as well. So we've always got enough for the next race weekend. Obviously with the COVID situation and the compressed timescales that we've had between races, means we've got to have quite a lot of stock to be able to replenish it because we may only have a week in between events. Um, so that's really, really important. So I'm here in the paddock with Willie Paul from Willie Paul Motorsport Services. Now, you might not have heard of Willie Paul before, but Willie Paul is probably one of the most important people in the paddock because he builds 18, 19 of the cars. So the chassis of these cars, which we're going to do a bit of a technical thing on, but the chassis of the cars, so Willie, and I've got to count these, so I was just chatting with him and I got confused myself talking about it. So we, he built the Hyundai's, the Cupra's, the BMW's and the Infinities. So it actually wasn't as complicated as I thought it was, but that's, but, and also nine new cars over the winter. He's been flat out. I'm surprised he's actually here. He hasn't just worn his fingers to the bone. So t tell me exactly how long does it take to build one of these chassis? You're about 600 hours per car from start to finish. Right. That, that's, a, that's a lot of man hours to go into it. Yeah, I mean, so give me a brief rundown of how, how that would start right from getting a bare chassis. We get, we get a bare chassis, it's dipped. So we'll get all the paint, seal it off it get it into the workshop, de-bracket it, do the seam welding and then start to put the roll cage and everything else back into it, leaves the car, leaves the workshop, ready to go to the paint shop and teams can build it. I mean another key area is safety really, I mean that's a, you know that, that's really what you're safety. providing as well as performance, safety is key. Safety is the main element of it, you've got to make sure that everybody's 100% safe so yeah. Over the years, over the last 10 years, I've done, I've done 40 new chassis and for three watts, and another four or six as well. So. No, that's brilliant. So actually, if anybody's got the best chance of winning a race this, this weekend, it's going to be you really, isn't it? If you've got 19 of the cars on the grid. No, it'll be a Honda. So looking at this bit here, so obviously that bolts to the chassis, the engine goes here, the driver's looking over the top here. But then we look in here, we've got some wishbones by the look of it and clevis pins and bits and pieces. So, so how does this work? So basically, obviously, these are the suspension components that, that then the wheel hangs off on the, on the subframe. Um, so we have things like um, these, which are wishbones. So this is a lower wishbone, this is an upper wishbone. Um, they fit to the frame with a clevis. So this is a clevis which goes um, onto it. This, um, this is, these are the two lower clevises. And then this wishbone fits in between the clevis. Now, for adjustability, um, obviously as part of the engineering setup of the car, you may want to move this backwards or forwards. And so the clevises, you can actually turn them round. So they're, they're actually asymmetric, okay. and then you have two holes. So that gives you a multitude of settings straight away. Um, you then may also want to move... And that's to adjust sort of caster and things like that. Exactly. So you can adjust yep. car. So exactly. that's just literally the angle the wheel's at in the car. Precisely. And then, yeah. and then, from, then once you've worked that out, then you can start looking at toes and cambers and things further exactly. into it but exactly. that's really one of the, the, the most basic settings really. Ex exactly it? it is yeah. Another important technical partner of the British Touring Car Championship is Swindon Powertrain. I've got the managing director Ralph K. is that right? Yes. That'll do will it? My French was never very good. I failed French O level so that's fine that's fine. Uh, so it shows we're a real European championship as well didn't we? we? We've got everybody involved so that's great but Swindon Powertrain provide 18 of the cars with their engines this year which is is that your biggest year so far it is one of the biggest year um yeah it's it's amazing it's our 12th year of supplying engines to the grid and uh, and it's our uh, and, and again we've got 18 18 customers so uh, so very happy with that 
So when you started, I always thought it's a little bit like the Cosworth DFE back in the like 70s, 80s in Formula One, because what it is, it allows privateer teams to compete with the big boys on the grid. So it is a little bit uh, the same spirit as what happened in Formula One back then. But in addition, what we always wanted was to give our customers the opportunity to win. We wanted to be as competitive as any other works uh, uh, engine. So that's what we've worked on all along, and it's come, uh, uh, you know, it's come good on a few occasions. Uh, in 2013, when the MG team won the Manufacturers Championship. On many occasions when we won the team championship, once with your team, Sean. Um, and then finally last year when uh, Ash Sutton, Team BMR and um, the uh, Infinity uh, won the driver championship. Hi everyone, so my question is, apart from me, obviously, who is the most rock and roll touring car driver of all time? And I don't mean just on the track, take off the track as well. I know who I think it is, but it's up to you. Let's see what you say. That is easy, Rick. Chris Rea. He did a few meetings in British Touring Cars in 93. I'm fairly sure he did the Turkish shootout as well. But yeah, Chris Rea, both on and off the track, best rocking touring car driver of all time. So we've got one car left on the grid with a seat to fill. Who is that one driver, past or present, that you would put in that final BTCC seat? Jay, that's an easy one. It's got to be Abby Eaton from the Grand Tour. She'd fill that seat. I think the clever thing about this is that actually all the parts are interchangeable because usually when it's when you get an engineer involved they want to engineer every single little bit individually so you'd have different wishbones for the rear different clevises things like that but actually what you've done is you managed to use all the parts so they can be interchangeable yeah. which is a massive cost saving to a British touring car team I can assure you and, and also to you guys for holding for spares you're holding exactly. because once we've got these bits bolted to the car the next bit we go on to is over here which is then we've got the hubs now these again cleverly done because it's the same hub front and rear which uh, is is that right uh front and rear wheel drive yes yes uh, okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so you go through so again just just talk me through that a little so, bit as well so this is a built up upright obviously it's available in 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 component form but we build them up here so if a team has a damaged one in between a race they can just come on here and get a complete assembly so it makes the actual change on the car a lot faster or if they have got more time they can build it up themselves um, so this is a cast component, um, standard as you said, ac across multiple um, uh, configurations. Uh, we have something called the, um, the hub, which basically the, the wheel will run on, and then there's a set of bearings inside the hub that um, allow it to, to, to run freely. And then we, if this is a driven wheel, there would be a drive shaft from the gearbox or the differential, which goes into here and basically makes this, this assembly turn. Um, we then have uh, steering arms, etc., uh, which again allow multiple adjustment. Um, we have spacers that we actually fit into here, which allow you to move, if you imagine this is the wheel, putting these spacers in there, and they allow you to do this with the wheel in your setup. Now, also, everybody talks about boost, but actually, ignition is probably as important as boost, really, because you could have less boost, but actually have much higher ignition, and you could have more power. Everything is important. It's a very competitive... He didn't answer that question, just so he didn't answer that question. It's a very competitive series and every parameter is important. When we're in Silverstone, you've got 30 cars within a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is, is, is crucial. So we work on each and every parameter uh, to make sure that the, the output uh, of the engine is the best it can be on the day. No, that's brilliant. Well, thanks very much for your time. I know you've got a busy day. You'll be doing a lot of running up and down the pit lane with lots. There's always happy faces. There's always glum faces in the British Touring Car Paddock. Who's those that? A the Alan. That oh, okay. The one that we. I was, I was thinking Alan Gow actually. So, oh, right. I shouldn't probably say that. But <laughs> yeah, definitely the one that wins. Yeah, that you're you're completely right. That is completely right. No, but thanks very much for your time, Raf. Good luck for the season. Maybe you'll end up, end up with a few more championships. And we, we mentioned about subframe damage. I mean, we've um, although we, we have new subframes on the truck ready for teams, we can 
repair subframes as well. So well, we saw yesterday we saw the team hard car that had an accident with Glyn Getty. Now we saw his subframe out of the car. This is actually the subframe that we saw yesterday that the guys are going to take back to the, the the manufacturing plant at RML, repair the damage that's up here, which then means that the team then has got less costs involved. I mean, I think that's for me that is one of the biggest things that helps make the British Touring Car Championship a success. Is is guys like you. Who are, who are able to support the teams in actually keeping the costs as, as low as possible. These things aren't cheap, are they? No, but exactly. they'd be much more expensive for the teams who are making them individually themselves. Yeah. And, and the teams would then have to have spares as well, because otherwise they're going to be out of a race if they don't have a spare on board. So, I mean, we have the, the frames are all made in jigs to make sure that they're all square and correct. So we can do the same thing with a repair. We'll take a repair back, we'll cut out the components that need replacing, uh, weld those new components in, do it all in the jig, and then theory you've got as good and as new subframe at the end of it that you can use again. Well brilliant, thanks very much for your time Simon, I really appreciate it. I know you've got a busy day on a Sunday, especially once the races start and we haven't got long to the first race so in some ways I hope you don't have too busy a day, in some ways for, for, for the bank account RML you probably hope you do. <laughs> but uh, that's great, again one of the great suppliers in British Touring Car Championships who helps helps keep the show on the road if you like and, and, with, and with the teams benefit massively for having someone like RML involved. Let's see how we get on later in the day, but hopefully the, bit, the parts truck isn't too busy today, Simon. So we're here at Thruxton for race day of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship, and the good news is it's dry. There's rain in the air, but none of it on the ground. So that's great news for the teams. Great news for their tyre budgets as well, because it looks like it's going to be a dry day for the races, but you can never really guess with the weather. So let's see how we get on. We've got Ash Sutton on pole. He's looking really strong. So he'll be happy either way, really, to be honest. He looked quick round here all day yesterday. So looking on to the day ahead, we'll be giving you all of the updates of what's happening. Make sure you download the Pitch BTCC app. You'll get all the updates there. I know we can't have fans here at the moment, but we will have soon and then you can get really involved and we'll be able to see you at the circuit. But download the app, we'll be giving you all the information that you exactly know what's happening throughout the day. So, wandering down the paddock here, the first team I come up to is the Sicily Car Gods Racing Team, who are running two BMWs. They had a bit of a mixed day yesterday, um, didn't quite get out of it what I think they were hoping to. The conditions probably didn't suit the car. I think Tom was a little bit better than he was earlier on. Had a gearbox problem in FP1, but they should be going better now. It's a bit drier, that'll be good for them. One team who really impressed me throughout the day and also especially in qualifying with the BTC racing guys. They're running Honda FK8 cars. They're running Swindon engines, who we just had a chat with Raf and he told us all about it. But again, you've got Josh Cook on pole. You've got Dan Camish, I think 11. Jade Edwards really impressed me actually. She was up in the top 10 at one point in qualifying halfway through. I think if it had stayed wet, she might have stayed there. Um, but again, maybe a little lack of experience that she didn't change to the slick tires quite early enough to make the best of the drying conditions it went on. So finished a little bit back, but 17th, I think Jade would have taken at the end of the day. But definitely a team on the move and doing a great job. So moving on up here, we've got BTC. So we walked through the other side of the garage, so you've got dynamics on this side. So let's actually come round this way, come round this way, Dan. So again, at the back here, you can see the tyre guys. This is what happens at the back that you don't really see, really. The amount of tyres that have to be used in British touring cars is outrageous. So each team, when we're here at Thruxton, they're allowed 20 slick tyres. They're allowed as many wet tyres as they like because it's difficult to control that. But again, once they get into the season proper, they're only allowed to carry have 16 new. Then after that, we have carryover tyres they use but this is a constant area of of activity trying to trying to keep the performance the best it can but also the tyre budget as as low as it can so coming through so they've come through to Dynamics's garage and again watching through here we chatted yesterday to uh, Gordon Shedden and Daniel Rowbottom and they were looking strong in free practice too qualifying didn't quite give them that that edge but I think Gordon's still in the top 10 and Daniel's just a little bit behind him, but again, still learning what he's up to. But again, I think these guys are real. The Honda around here, this is a Honda Honda track, really. It really needs the, 
the grip, it needs the balance, good chassis balance, and definitely the Honda Team Dynamics built cars have that. So interesting to see how they get on. Nerves are starting to build for some of the drivers as they get ready for the first race of the day. It's dry, but it's sort of getting a bit damp. We've got Nick Hamilton going through there. We'll just wander into the collecting area here. So as we come through, just the way that the way that everything is here at Thruxton, you've got quite a few of the cars who are in the second second paddock. But as we, let's have a little wander through because we can we can come through to this bit. We can't look at the cars on on the on the grid. So you've got the four. Team hard cars, you've got the four Accelerate Trade Prize cars, cars, cars. You've got the two Vauxhalls at the front there. So, you know, what's happening now is the drivers are starting to get in the zone. You know, they've, it's probably been happening for the last half hour. The nerves will be there, which is, is good, you know, because it gives you a little bit of a buzz. But now they need to get calm because it is a storm that's coming. And we're not talking about the weather. You know, when you've got 29 cars on the grid, They've all had various problems. You've got some guys at the back who should be at the front, some guys at the front who should be at the back. It's gonna be a hectic race, and it's the calmest head that will come through in the end. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on. On the Pitch BTCC app, you guys at home were voting, and these are your predictions for race one. So one of the big stories in the British Touring Car Championship is Nick Hamilton. So Nick's here in his fantastic looking Seat Cupra run by Team Hard. Nick has had experience now for two or three years in British Touring Cars, but as everybody knows, Nick has got cerebral palsy. He works super hard to get himself on the grid commercially, but works even harder to get himself physically ready for British Touring Cars. So let me have a see if I can have a quick chat with him while he's getting ready. Nick, you've got your first, first race of the year coming up. How's it looking for you? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, yesterday was uh, was difficult. It's the first time we've driven the car in the wet. Um, so obviously, with a new car, you've got to do a lot of development. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be dry today, which is which is a benefit for us. We've done a lot of dry running, um, so it's it's going to be hopefully a better day than yesterday. It is Sutton then who leads the way. But Sutton spins on cold tyres. Around goes the leader. Around goes the champion. And that puts George Cook into the lead of the race. That's Gordon Shannon who's off the road. The safety car is out. And that is Plato through on the inside of Butcher. That gives the Astra fifth place. Butcher tries to fight back. A little bit of a rub between them. Butcher gets the inside line for Seeing Ray, but goes back through. Great racing. That's good racing from Wave, and coming through now is Camish, who takes both of them in one go. Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship, won by Josh Cook as he comes over the line to win from Tom Ingram, giving Accelerate its best ever finish. Jake Hill hangs on to third ahead of Colin Turkington, fourth, fifth, Dan Camish, and sixth is just going to be Butcher ahead of Plato, and Robottom right with them at the end in eighth place. Okay, we're at the back of the garages in mid race one. Dynamics have just got their car back. It's a little bit damaged on the front end. Let's see if we can get a word out of out of Gordon. Hello guys, sorry Gordon, not the ideal time, I know. Um, what do you think happened out there? Uh, Ollie Jackson lost it going through Noble and jumped on the brakes and didn't really leave me anywhere to go. So, you know, it put me on the grass and just a passenger from there, wet grass really, you know, trying to do my best to avoid him and yeah, got caught up after that. No, that's right. Do you, are you okay? Because it looked quite yeah. a heavy hit. Yeah, it's okay. You know, just annoying. Didn't really need to happen.
in there, it was all a, a little bit close going around that first lap. So how did you see it? Um, well, to be honest, I mean, I was coming out of Noble and I had Rory on the, on my outside in front of me. I just got a hit up the back and that, that sent me sideways and all I could do was gather it back up. So I actually, I was looking at what was in front of me. I didn't, I didn't actually see what occurred behind me, but uh, I think it was Gordon that, that hit me. It seemed to be that way. He seemed to get it all seemed to get shuffled together, I think, a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, you did brilliantly to hang on to it because I know what it's like round there. It's not the sort of corner you want to be shuffled off onto the grass. But um, you, you, you kept it all together. But unfortunately, it looked like you got some some debris in the front front grill. Yeah, just when I went off, there's a bit of a dip on the outside there, and I just caught it with the front end, and it just hoovered a load of grass into the radiator. So the, the temps were a bit concerning and safety cars. So the boys had a look and saw there was a load of grass in it. So we we had to stop to clear it out. So after a bit of rough and tumble in the first race, the man who looked calmest of all was Josh Cook here, who, who won the first race and never seemed to be pressured at all. How was it for you? It felt a bit more pressured in the car. Um, yeah, it was good. Obviously, had a good day yesterday, front row start, but none of it matters uh, until you convert it to a result. So it's come out of the block strong, bit of a hectic first lap, but um, yeah, just kept out of trouble. And uh, good, to, good to bring it back for the win for, for the guys. So yeah, it's... Um, it's a long day, uh, 75 kilos going in the car now, success ballast. Yeah, got to see if we can uh, keep the momentum going. So one thing, uh, you mentioned it there, the first lap, there was a bit of shenanigans coming up to came with the two BMWs, but no, I don't think we called it on the television. So how did you see that? Um, I saw Ash leave stage right. Um, I don't really know what happened. I was on the outside of Colin. I don't know if he tried to get back on the power to stop me from going around the outside of him and just clip the back of Ash. I think that's probably what happened, but I'm just speculating. Um, whatever it was, it worked for me. So um, yeah, obviously a shame if uh, Ash didn't get a decent result, but um, like I say, it's a long old season. We just need to try and get as many points as we can throughout the rest of today. Uh, and yeah, be in the running towards the end of the year. There was also another incident coming at the end of the first lap, coming up to Chicane, because we had a BMW spinning off right of field, but I don't know if you were involved in that as well? No, nope, didn't see any of that. Um, I, was, I was trying to blame you for it. Yeah. Come on, give me, give me something I can blame you for. <laughs> um, I had my eyes firmly set on Tom Ingram. Uh, I was just trying to manage that gap between us. And Yeah, I mean, they've got that, that Hyundai going really well, and I think it just shows the importance of having a, a mega driver like, like Tom in the team and, and what he's done for, for Accelerate. So, I don't think it's going to be the last time he's going to be up there. Obviously, we're starting side by side in the next one. We've both got a bit of weight in, so we'll be trying to fight each other whilst trying to keep all the quicker cars that are coming through behind us. So we saw the guys from Team Dynamics getting the front end ready. We've come back, having walked around the paddock, having a chat. They've got an hour and 15 minutes to go, but they've already swapped the front end. Here's the old one sitting here. They put the new front end on there. What a great team gives Gordon Shedden a chance to come through from the back in race two, because he's obviously going to be quick. Let's see how we get on. But uh, yeah, this is what being a British touring car team mechanic is all about. It's, uh, it's not all sunglasses and ice cream, but uh, you know, the guys, will, the guys will feel it tonight <laughs> when they get home. So all the teams are now getting ready for race two, but the big news after race one, Colin Turkington, who finished fourth, got a 17 second penalty for the contact that was made with Ash Sutton on the first lap that dropped Ash back in the field. So that puts Colin back to 10th place. So that makes a big difference because he had to be put back behind Ash Sutton. I haven't had a chance to speak to Colin. He's keeping out of the way, but I'm not sure he's too happy about that. But the other big story is, there's a little bit of rain in the air. got Gordon Shedden's car, there's Gordon standing there getting ready. This is the car that had to have a new front end after the race one incident. Uh, don't think there's any, any stewards look at that. I mean, I think he actually got penalised enough by ending up in the wall, to be honest. But the guys have done a fantastic job. You wouldn't know that two hours ago this, this car didn't have a front end on it. So fair play to the team, they've done a great job. So just at the start of Race two here at Thruxton. Let's see what happens in this one. The rain is just starting to come down. Interesting to see what the pitch BTCC app users think. It's anybody's race, but my money's on Ash Sutton. 
These are your predictions for race two on the Pitch BTCC app. So we've just seen a pretty horrific accident at the first corner of race two, which involved Andy Neat, Jade Edwards and Glyn Getty. We've just seen all the drivers get out of the cars okay, but uh, it's never nice to see a car going upside down. Uh, pretty, pretty heavy damage, definitely on Geddes' car and on the other two. But the, the main thing is the drivers are all okay uh, and they, they're all coming back to the garage. So let's see if we can grab hold of them as they come back. Looking at that, Bobby, you looked at that shunt. He must have had thoughts of last year. So how do you think the guys are going to feel now? Well, you, you, that drive back in the medical car, whether you're okay or not, you just feel deflated. You know, you build yourself up so hard for all three of the races on the day and qualifying yesterday, uh, for them to be over all in one corner. And it happened so fast, um, you know, you, you're just running through your mind in that, in, on your way back to the medical center. So yeah, I'm sure the guys will just be uh, glad they're okay. It looks like they're okay. Um, and you're just running it back in your head from half of the time, making sure, was that my fault? Wasn't it my fault? Or trying to, you know, see if we can get the car ready for, for race three. As a driver, that's your natural thing. Is it ready to go again? So we're at the back of the garages now. We've got Glyn Getty with us, who was involved in that big accident. It's great to see that you're okay. Testament to how strong the car is, because it, yeah. it looked pretty right. And how strong you are as well, <laughs> you know, so you're looking good. So I'm, I'm glad to see you're still smiling about it, but it looked horrific. Yeah, it was. Um, it's just stupid, to be honest. And um, you're going into the first corner, it's a long race. Um, wanted to bag some points for the team, wanted just to finish. We're not in the best uh, position this weekend, so. Um, yeah, just tried to get a clean race again and to, to have somebody come in and tell them with their throttle stuck into the first corner is just beyond a joke, to be honest. Another driver involved in that horrendous accident was Jade Edwards. So just if you want to walk over this way, have got Jade here. She's talking to her mum, Anne, and a, a little little nephew, cousin, I think, I think niece. Firstly, you all okay off that shunt? Yes, I'm fine. I think because it was lap one, I was so tightly strapped in. That I didn't move uh, an inch, so uh, yeah, feel fine. I saw you chatting to your mum there. Was, you, was your mum okay? <laughs> I think she was more stressed than I was, to be honest. From what I've heard in the garage, she ran around like a headless chicken. But no, she's she's been around long enough to know a, a, a safe shunt and a, and a scary shunt. And I think it was a mix between the two, but I'm, we're all good. So we've heard from all the drivers after that pretty scary accident at turn one at the start of race two. The cars are just lining up at the moment, but it'd be interesting to see what the users of the Pitch BTCC app have a think about that incident. They're usually quite vocal on the internet, aren't they? But for now, we're concentrating on the start of the restarted race two. Lights out, who gets away best of all in his cook once again. Not a great start this time by Hill, so Cavish gets ahead of him, Butcher gets ahead of him, Jake Hill goes backwards, and there Ingram tries the outside line against Josh Cook, gets run out wide. Butcher's off at high speed. Oh, big slam into the wall. And a sudden stop as well, so Rory Butcher off the road in the Toyota Gazoo Racing UK Corolla. Robottom goes through on the outside line. Good pass, gains the place. Really good pass. And that Honda looking terrific. Sutton's behind Aaron Taylor Smith. Will he be able to get up the inside or will he have to go to the outside and brave it? He's gone to the outside. Where's Smith? Look to the right, look to the right. Oh, he's done it all the way. Wow, he was able to take the apex as well. Now we've got Robottom trying to get past Plato. Oh, beautifully timed cutback. What a lovely move. And he's done it. Perfect. It's going to be two out of two in the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship as Josh Cook comes across the line to win. Dan Camish, second, plays the perfect teammate sitting there behind. Third goes to Jake Hill. Dan Robotham's career best, fourth ahead of Jason Plato, fifth. So after a bit of a crash fest of race two here at Thruxton, with a lot of damaged cars, which nobody likes to see, luckily it seems like we haven't got any damaged drivers, which is, is great to hear and testament to how strong these cars are. 
There's been a lot of work going on from the boys and girls in the teams to try and get some of the damaged cars back out. Sadly, I think there's two or three of them that won't be back out for the last race because there's just too much damage to the shell that's there. But let's see how they get on. I know they'll, they'll do the best to get them out. But on the track, it was a fantastic result for BTC Racing with Josh Cook first and Dan Camish second, so that's great for them. And then we had Jake Hill in the MB Motorsport, accelerated by Blue Scare, Ford Focus, for another podium place for him. So looking good for those guys, but a lot of work to do for the boys and girls and the teams back here in the paddock at Thruxton. So as we've got the top three drivers coming off the podium there, it's Jake Kelly in third place, Dan Kamish in second, and then Josh Cook there who won the race. So let's see if we can grab a, grab a chat with Josh Cook. So if you want to follow me over. So just a quick note. Josh, can I have a quick chat with you here? Yeah. No, that's good. Sorry, mate. That's all right. Yeah, no, it's great. Fantastic. Right, you're making it look easy today. <sighs> I'm hanging on. Um, you know, Dan could have made my life an awful lot easier, uh, harder. Sorry, but he was he was good to me then. So yeah, it was nice to nice to actually play the team game. He he, he was um yeah. I mean, I, I was a little bit surprised that he he was he was so willing to 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 sit there and kind of guard me a little bit. So huge credit to him. Um, not many people would have done that. And I know as a driver, it's hard to swallow your pride and sit there when you might have the pace to attack for the for the lead. So huge credit to to Dan, but. Also, just great for the team. You know, rock out. See, front row start in quali. Two wins, two fastest laps. Car was mega then. Uh, I think it went even quicker with the Max Ballast, which shows the, the steps we took forwards with the car even between race one and race two. So, I mean, you know how tough that is with, with a lot of weight in the car. So, huge credit to the team. But yeah, there's another one. <laughs> I want to try and get all three. Somebody's told me if I do all three, I get I get to own Thruxton. Um, did, well, just the grass or the whole track as well? I think it's the whole track. I'm, I'm taking it as the track, but yeah, I pulled pulled 11 out of the bowl, so uh, I'm starting 11th in the next one, so it might be a little bit harder. So again, more grid places made, up to P2. Josh said there he was really grateful that you were behind him because you were definitely looking after him, I thought. I think he, he said you thought you might not quite have the pace, but he was pretty sure you did. So yeah. he's really pleased that, that, that you've been brought into the team this weekend. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, you, know, you get a phone call and you, you play a team game, don't you? I'm very, very grateful to BTC and Steve for, for giving me a call. And yeah, you know, you've got to swallow your pride sometimes. A anybody else, of course, I would have had a go. Uh, you know, we had a car fast enough to win that race. But, um, you know, I'm here for one one shot only, here to do the best job I can for myself and the team. And, and today that meant getting Josh home with as many points as possible and as many points for the team as possible. So I think we delivered that, you know, ex ex you know exceptionally today. So, uh, yeah, on to the next one. Um, great result for BTC and, uh, yeah, happy to play my role. So we've got Jake Hill and Mark Blundell from MB Motorsport here. Great drive again. P3 in the first one, P3 in the second one. Where are you going to go in the third? Who knows? You know, it's, um, I, I think we start ninth for, for race three. So that's a decent starting position. And to be honest, Sean, if we could just stay inside, sort of, you know, the top 10 really, but the top eight would be nice. Just bag another load of points and, you know, take this uh, championship fight all the way to the front. Now, the interesting thing as well is that You've got two trophies for the Manufacturer Stroke Constructors Championship as well. So that's a that's a new thing. That's for the motor based side of the team. So that's great to be winning as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, first time uh, as a as a manufacturer driver, so to speak, and um, you know, it's been a brilliant a brilliant day. The other, you know, the BMW guys and, and Toyota obviously haven't had the strongest start to their campaign, so we've taken it by storm really. And um, yeah, it's brilliant for the team. A huge thank you to MB Motorsport, accelerate by Blue Square and Motorbase for providing me a, a even better car in race two. So Mark, what do you reckon from, from, from your point of view, how's, how's the boy doing? Oh, he's done fantastic. I mean, uh, two podiums out of two races. Last race is also going to be a little bit tough for him because, you know, we've got to uh, come from a bit further back and I think there's going to be some guys like Sutton with no weight that are going to be very, very competitive. 
But um, listen, this time last year, things were a lot worse than this. So um, to kick off today with what we've got so far, I think we're all very happy with. Well, I'm standing here, I can feel a little bit of precipitation coming out the sky. That might help with that extra weight that you've got. Yeah, to be honest, Sean, if it's, if it's rain or if it's dry, I don't care. You know, it's, uh, the car's good in either. And, um, you know, I know I've, I've got a great machine underneath me. So hopefully, get stuck in and get it done. Brilliant, congratulations. I don't care if it's wet or dry either. <laughs> Have you brought your umbrella? <laughs> Back in the BTC Racing Garage, they had a fantastic result with a 1-2 with Josh Cook and Dan Camish. Unfortunately, Jade Edwards is involved in that big first corner crash in race two. And as you can see behind, the whole team, it seems like, are working on the car to get it ready. You've got another subframe down here, which has obviously come off, and you can see some damage on the side, which has come through. So it was quite big. We're with Jade. Um, Jade, are they going to get the car ready for race three? Yeah, that's the aim. Uh, it's going to be touch and go, so we don't have very long, but it might be a pit lane start. We might make it to the grid at that moment. That is unknown, but they're just working flat out to see the, the best they can do. And no after effects to you after that, because sometimes you can feel a bit sore a couple of hours later. No, I think because it was lap one, I was so tightly strapped into the seat that I, you know, I, I've got no injuries, no aching. Maybe tomorrow will be a different story, but as I stand here now, I'm absolutely fine. These are the predictions from the Pitch BTCC app for the final race of the day. Okay, so we can see up here, the guys from BTC Racing have got Jade Edwards' car ready, pushed out to the garage now, so brilliant job for them. Got everything together, so it's fantastic. That's a, that's a real team effort to get that ready for the race. So if that shunt, this is the only car that's going out because Glyn Geddes' car isn't ready to go out, too much damage, and also Andy Neat's car isn't going out as well. So fair play to the BTC guys for getting it ready. So another car that was in the wars in that race two, which was a bit of a crash fest, was Rory Butcher's Toyota Corolla. It's looking a little bit worse for wear, but it looks like the guys are going to get it out for race three. Let's hope so. It's going to be touch and go. Maybe he'll have to start from the pit lane. I don't know. But uh, the biggest damage was on the right rear corner, and the guys seem to have pulled that out. But uh, as you can see, another team where there's probably about 10, 12 people working to get this car on the grid. So all the cars have now just gone out, they've just left on their green flag lap. It's raining, there was a massive scramble to change to wet tyres and maybe a chance to put some wet setup on. It's gradually getting a little bit heavier and uh, I think it's going to be a bit tricky to make these wet tyres last a full race distance. But what's always th also thrown into the mix is the reverse grid. So basically anybody fi finishes in the top 12, anybody from 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th gets put in a hat, get pulled out and they get reversed from there. So the guy who won the last race, Josh Cook, is back in 11th place in this one, and the guy who finished 11th is on pole position. Let's see what happens next. The lights out, they slither away from the line. Good start by Jelly, and now you'll see those on wet start to pounce forward. So it's Jelly that leads away. Ash Sutton goes second as they head into Allard for the first time. Colin Turkington up the curve as he tries to go third, but a good getaway by Jelly there. Jelly leads up to the complex for the second time. Sutton makes that move to the outside for the first element of the complex. Can he get the switch back? He tries for the outside line going into Cobb, which is the inside for Seagrave. He gets run out wide. There's a run between them. Sutton goes through. This is Tom Chilton up the inside of Carl Baldley and goes through. So he picks up the place. 
There is Jake Hill. He's just going to come steaming up alongside Jason Plato, who ain't going to give up without a fight into the chicane. And Jake swaps sides. Plato <laughs> runs out wide, misses out the chicane, gets back on, gets in the way a little bit of uh, Tom Oliphant on his slick tyres. But Jake's away and gone. The nice warm slicks for Jake Hill are about to give him the race lead, but can he stay there? Hill takes the advantage. Jake Hill leads at Thruxton, but look, the rain is coming. But that's Chris Smiley having a wild old ride. Whoa, whoa. Oh, so sideways out of church, and that's the save of the day. Now Sutton goes for the inside line. The wax work, he's got the grip, he's got the traction, he's got the lead, and Ash Sutton then goes through. The checker flag is at the ready. Ash Sutton wins. Takes will the it, flag. Will it be Hill or Plato? It's going to be Hill. It's going to be Plato, Plato on the line. He just does it. Jason Plato gets his nose in front, and he did it by seven hundredths of a second. So what an incredible race three, definitely dominated by the weather. The guys who started on slicks at the start just dropped all the way back, but as it dried out, they came all the way back through. The leading driver of those was Jake Hill. So he went all the way out of the top 20, back up to lead the race. At the same time as the, the wet guys were making hay at the front trying to pull away. But as it dried out, their tyres went off and they started to drop back. Interesting, he thought that was all over but then it started raining again. And then Jake Hill started dropping back. You saw Ash Sutton coming through, past Tom Oliphant, who was doing a great job, straight back up through, got past him and pulled away. But then we had Jason Plato, still life in the old dog yet. I wonder if they were thinking about that qualifying instant. Mm, maybe, maybe, but let's see. So anyway, Jake Hill and him, bit of argy-bargy over the line, but Jake managed to finish third. Jason up into second place, so great result for him in Powermax Racing. I think that means that Jake Hill's actually leading the championship going from here, so that's good. Just one point ahead of Josh Cook, though, who has sort of been the hero of the day, really. Won two races, didn't quite go for him that way. Looked like he had a jump start penalty or maybe out of position penalty. I'll find out after the race, but it's great. But what we've also got, your favourite, from the Pitch BTCC app is Jake Hill, and he's won the Pitch Cup, so we'll be giving to that to him later on. Just very quickly, we've got Ash Sutton here, race winner. What a race, what a roller coaster. How was it for you? Yeah, it was ph phenomenal, obviously. You, you leave, the, leave the grid and you're on the wet, you think you've made the right choice, and. You hear the slicks are coming along, and before you know it, Jake, Jake and Tom, to be fair, uh, come through, and then the heavens open again, and it's like, hang on a minute, right, now it's back in our ball, in our court. So, yeah, we've had a tough old day, but we've uh, we've got what we finally deserved, I believe. No, exactly what I expected you to get more than one race win today, but I think those conditions are made for you, I think. Yeah, look, we, we've had two, shall we say, rough races, obviously taken out in the first one, mechanical issue in the second one, but that we come from the back of them and still got to P9 in both of them. So it just proves the pace in the car. The team have done a phenomenal job. Uh, so it's great to, to fly the flag for laser tools racing. And yeah, we got what we deserved, I think, in the end. Well, congratulations. Looks like you're in a strong position to keep hold of that number one for next year. Fingers crossed. But that, you know, the, the main thing is, you know, we've had, we've had to, uh, Three good results today, so solid. You know, we have not had any issues, no shunts, no run-ins with anybody, um, and we've got a good set of points, and uh, that will be good, you know, moving forward. Um, yeah, pleased. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I'm a bit annoyed at Cook for getting involved when he had no big, big business to do so, and you know, because he, he could have been past Hill, but then elected to jump on the brakes and block me at church. Okay, all right, right. Yeah, no, well, I saw that. I thought you might have kept it out of the way. I agree with you. That's a bit low rent. It's amazing yeah. what two wins can do to your ego, isn't it, I suppose? And, and you'd know all about ego, Jason. I, I, well, in my, in my issue, I call it confidence. What a great day. Not just the race, but what a great day for you and the team. It's been unreal, Sean, you know. It's, um, I could not ask for it to go any better really you know it was um, especially those last few laps there of race three it was literally do or die you know it was a, such a knife edge between getting the job done and throwing it in the bin and obviously <laughs> we got the job done so three three podiums um mb motorsport accelerate by blue square motorbase have been fantastic 
so proud of them all, uh, proud of myself. I think I've done a good job and um, yeah, it puts me in good stead for you know putting up a, a title defence. Well, it shows the difference with tyres because at the start I was watching and going, oh, what a terrible decision to go onto slicks. Yeah. I was watching and going, oh, that's the end. Then suddenly, and then literally within two laps, you were up to fourth. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's right. And but obviously it goes the other way as well because my slicks are coming good and there's a massive pace difference, but the wets are dropping off, which is also a massive pace difference. So when you add the two together, it's probably like five, six seconds a lap, I think it was in the end, that I was catching Ash and obviously... We just, you know, we just, we just pounded through. I had Oliphant with me pretty much the whole way, and we were doing a good job together as a team to get through everyone. So, good shout out to to him as well for, you know, not being an idiot and staying with me and trusting the process. And we went together, you know. So it was, um, it was really, really good driving from everyone involved. And yeah, as I say, I just can't believe I'm leading the British Touring Car Championship. That's unreal. Do you want to say that again? I think I'm leading the British Touring Car Championship. It's crazy. <laughs> So that's fantastic. I've got another little prize, just in case you didn't have enough prizes to go home with. So the Pitch BTCC app users have voted you their driver of the day. So we've got we've got a bottle of champagne for you and also for your girlfriend Hannah, because I'm sure you'll give it to her. We've got some Amazon vouchers as well for the driver of the weekend. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, everyone who's using the Pitch app, I can't thank you enough. That's really, really kind of you. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, a massive thank you for your support. Let's hope we can uh, do, do more of that, you know, but in the meantime, I will enjoy the bubbly, so thank you very much. No problem at all. Thanks very much. Save some for me. I'll be over later. So I'm hiding under the awning here, just as Colin Turkin is trying to escape home. Not the best day you've had in British touring cars, but you scored a few points, got yourself on the board. So how's your roundup with the day? Yeah, I, I did what I come here hoping to do, you know, was score three top tens. And, uh, you know, given the level this year, that's easier said than done. So, you know, Thruxton is, is not the easiest place to start the season. And, you know, I've had such an up and down weekend, you know, even thinking back to yesterday. And physically, it's been, it's been difficult. But, uh, yeah, it could have been better. It could have been a lot worse. So, uh, you know, I'm reasonably satisfied and, you know, go to Snetterton, one of our stronger tracks, you know, with not too much weight. So uh, it's all good. So that's a wrap from us here at Thruxton. What a great day's racing. Look forward to seeing you again at rounds four, five and six at Snetterton. Make sure you download the Pitch BTCC app and look at all the live footage from ITV4. Thanks guys, thanks for all your support. Catch all the action live from Snetterton on ITV4 and download the Pitch BTCC app to get involved in the conversation and have your say.